His name is Pat Donovan at Pat Donovan Radio. That's his Twitter handle at 953WDAE, the Pat and Aaron Show. The big news out of your place, of course. And look, I don't want to kind of say it with a sigh in my voice, Pat, but it kind of feels that this would have had a hell of a lot more impact last year when he did retire and then he came back. He's retired, retired again, Tom Brady. Yeah, he has. And, and, and to be technical, he actually never retired last year. He never actually filled out the paperwork. So technically, this is his first retirement. But of course, he made the announcement last year, stayed away for 40 days before deciding, you know what, I do think I want to come back and play football for another year or more. It didn't turn out to be more. It turned out to be a year. And even though it was a frustrating year for Buccaneer fans, I think they were glad to have him for one more year. And you know, at the end of the day, uh, again, coming off of a frustrating season, I think most Buccaneer fans today are looking back and thinking, hey, how cool that we got to experience that for a few years. I'm so glad that that's the feeling because, you know, let's be honest about it. Before he arrived, did anyone really think that Tampa was a contender that year? He comes from the Patriots. They don't want him no more. First year, he wins a Super Bowl. <laughs> he wins a Super Bowl. It, it really is crazy, and when you think about it, right, it was more significant than even doing it in his first year because of when his first year was. Remember 2020 was peak COVID. That's when we had all the restrictions going on. We didn't have a normal mini camps and OTAs and the things that lead up to training camp to get you ready for a season. They didn't have a conventional training camp, so there were all these extra obstacles because of COVID that made it even that much more unlikely that he'd be able to come over to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and get it done in year one. So when you combine the obstacles that COVID-19 created with the fact that it was just his first year in a new system on a new team, it really was remarkable what, what they and really what he accomplished in 2020. Yeah, I've watched a lot of docos about him, um, and like a lot of people have, just because I've just always been fascinated about how physically he can keep doing this. At 45 years old, playing quarterback, and you know, the, you know, the most prized position in any United States professional sports league. So much responsibility on you, and also just the sheer physical demands. Pat, has he rewritten the rules regarding the age barrier? Has he re-raised the bar now? I, I would have thought 35 was the cutoff, but has he raised it now that you can play that position into your 40s? I think he's shown that if you do all the right things, right? Because I'm also 45, by the way, and I'm just psyched when I get through a day without any pain. Okay, <laughs> so like, not all 40, right? right? Not all 45 year olds are built the same. Um, but if you do all the things that Tom Brady did, it has shown that you can have that kind of longevity in the league. Now it's interesting because it's kind of trending in the other direction a lot. A lot. If you think about a lot of the guys, really have a better understanding of what football does to people and the long-term uh, results of playing football for a long time. So we're seeing a lot of guys kind of make that decision to retire younger. So because of that, you almost wonder if we ever will see anything like Tom Brady again, but he has shown that it's possible. You know, he's definitely not, we, we joke about him being an alien, but when you think back to the way that he looked his rookie season, the guy is not a spectacular athlete. He's a spectacular competitor. And when you have the discipline and the drive that Tom Brady has, it's absolutely possible because there's a lot of guys who are better athletes. They just don't have it upstairs because very few individuals on this earth ever do when it comes to that level of competitiveness, that level, that level of drive and dedication. Most of us uh, don't have it. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that. Pat Donovan, uh, Pat, at Pat Donovan Radio, that's his Twitter handle, people, 953WDAE. Tampa Bay, and we're talking about Tom Brady. Uh, has, you know, has the records the man has set, 100,000 passing yards. I, I, I can't even get my head around that. Record touchdowns, I think. You know, are those ever going to be broken? I suppose saying that, we never thought that Kareem's record would be broken and, and, and LeBron's about to do it. But you're going to have to get a guy that plays for 20 years also in a really good team. Yeah, I think, you know, the 17th game, because remember NFL seasons used to be 16th, will have a, a slight impact on guys' overall numbers. But you're right. It's only so far. It's still going to take a guy at least 20 years to come even close, even with the way that the game is changing and becoming more of an offensive game. A guy's going to have, um, have to have unbelievable longevity. 
So, uh, again, eventually, kind of as you just alluded to, right, uh, eventually all records are made to fall and games change, and I'm sure somebody someday long after I'm dead uh, will we'll, we'll pull it off. But yeah, it certainly isn't something I expect to see, and I think most people expect to see any time in the near future. What's he like, Pat? I know that he wears a halo around his head, but everything that I sort of see and read and you hear what people say about him, he just comes across as a really nice dude. He's never in the, the, the headlines for the wrong reasons. I know that, you know, all all of us in the media make a big meal out of his, his marriage and his divorce and things. I mean, that's his private life. He seems like a good father. He seems like a good person. Is that who he is? He is. He's a fantastic guy. And the reality is that um, he, he is a little bit guarded because he has a level of fame that most NFL players never really reach. Uh, most athletes never really reach. I think, you know, you just mentioned LeBron James. He's a guy that's in that atmosphere. Michael Jordan was in that atmosphere. But, you know, most guys, even very famous NFL players, can kind of get away going out different places and not being recognized. Tom Brady will never have that. Uh, Tom Brady, you know, to be honest, has never done – a local radio hit with myself or anybody on our station. Uh, and I happen to be the pre and post game analyst for the Buccaneers. So I'm, I'm tied pretty closely to the team, uh, but he's never uh, done local radio with anybody at our station um, or anybody locally in Tampa Bay. He's never been on the radio, um, you know, unless you hear him on with Howard Stern or one of the big national names. Um, so he's even in the post game show where our post game uh, sideline guy would usually have the quarterback in years past. Tom hasn't done that. So he's, he's definitely guarded, but it doesn't mean he's not a good person. All of the evidence, you know, like you said, great dad, does some good things in the community that you don't really hear about because he is so guarded. But a great guy, but a little guarded and doesn't, get, doesn't let us get as close as we probably would have liked. See, and that leads nicely into the next question. So with his TV career, and it's very lucrative and all of that, but what are we going to get out of him? Are we going to see more personality? Because if, if, he's, if, if he's as guarded as he is, I just don't know how well that TV career is going to go. I mean, I'm a big fan of so many of the NFL commentators, uh, and for, for, for varying reasons, for different reasons. But, you know, even say, just as an example, you look at Joe Buck and you look at Troy, you kind of get a little bit about those guys when you listen to them and you watch them as well. And I just wonder whether, are, you know, are we going to learn more about him as a person through his TV career? You know, I think it's, it's interesting because while he is guarded, he's done little things, especially since he's been in Tampa Bay. Uh, him and Gronk, while Gronk was here, had a little series of videos that the Buccaneers put out where it was like them sitting by a kiddie pool and answering questions. There's the things he did years ago. If you look up uh, Tom Brady fake Dick Sporting Goods commercial that he did that showed a lot of personality. So there's a lot in there that I don't think he, if you listen to his podcast, you hear a little bit more personality than you ever see from him at an NFL podium. So I think it's definitely in there. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, my take since finding out that he was going to take that job is just knowing who Tom Brady is, knowing the way that he attacked his NFL career and, I have no reason to believe there's any reason he'd attack his broadcasting career any differently. There are kids today who they play the game Madden uh, on their PlayStation, right? And they've no, they've heard of Madden forever, but they didn't realize that the guy was an NFL coach. Yeah, He's just yeah. a guy in a video game. That's right. And I, and I wouldn't be surprised if decades from now – there are young kids who have to be told that Tom Brady was the greatest quarterback of all time because I think he's really going to be that good in the booth. Nobody prepares like that guy for an NFL Sunday, and I'm going to expect the same thing from him as a broadcaster. And because of his level of knowledge of the game, having played it for 23 years, uh, seeing it at a level that clearly very few guys do, I think he's going to be able to verbalize that better than a lot of people expect, and I really do. I think he's going to become one of those guys that years from now we're going to have to tell people he played football because he's so good in the booth. Pat Donovan is with us out of Tampa talking about Tom Brady. Has he accomplished everything he wants to in his career? <laughs> Probably not, just because of – uh, the competitor that he, that he is, like we we'll keep talking about, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I think when he looks back, when he goes five years from now to Canton, Ohio, and accepts that first ballot bid into the Hall of Fame, that he'll look back and, you know, retrospectively be very happy with what he's accomplished. He's done more than any other player at his position or really in the NFL's history. He's got to be happy with that. But just knowing, again, the competitor that he is, he wanted to win it every year, and every year that he didn't was a disappointment. And I think this year especially was, was a frustrating one for him, and I, I imagine that, that kind of played into his decision to not do it again. 
Lord, frustrated, you know, underachieving. God, be a, be a, be a commander's quarterback, mate. Come and play for us, and then you talk about being. The... <laughs> a couple of more questions, we'll uh, we'll uh, let you go. Obviously, you know, the conversation always turns, and I know we're dumb sports fans, and this is what we do about you know the goat, the greatest of all time, and all of that. And I, I always just think they're meaningless conversations. You know, we've been having them about Novak down here, of course, with the Australian Open, and is he better than Rod Laver? And I'm an old guy, and I think you know Laver had two actual calendars the Grand Slams and didn't play that whole you know, six years in the middle of it. But look, in terms of him being who he was through that whole 20-something year period and the quarterbacks that were also in the league, it's like Michael Jordan. And I love that quote that, you know, Michael Jordan has just basically wrecked a whole lot of careers because guys just couldn't win a championship when he was around. Has Did Brady do the same? Are there a whole lot of quarterbacks wandering streets these days cursing Tom Brady because they may have had a ring with if he wasn't playing? Yeah, there's no question about it. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a guy that spent a large portion of my life and a little bit of my career saying, I don't really believe that you can tell anybody who the greatest NFL quarterback of all time was because the game has changed so much. It was such a different game when Joe Montana and those guys, Dan Marino, when they were playing football, it was really a lot more about the run game. And you could be a lot more physical wide receipt with wide receivers. And it was just, it was a more difficult game when it came to throwing the football. So now you look at the numbers today and they're so much greater than that era. And you go, wow, these quarterbacks, it's not that the quarterbacks are that much greater than those quarterbacks. It's just that the, the game has changed. It's evolved, and we're throwing the football more. So for the for those reasons, I always said you can't say who the greatest of all time was. And and then Tom Brady came back from twenty eight to three in the Super Bowl. Yeah, and then yeah. Tom Brady came over here, and as I just talked about with all those things and the the, the COVID nineteen and everything else that he had to jump over to figure out a way to win here his first year as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, I said, you know what? I don't know how I can argue that he's not the greatest of all time. All right, then. And so glad that he didn't join the soap opera that was Brett Favre and then now Aaron Rodgers. Because, I mean, I mean <laughs> me how, see, how tiresome is all that? Um, listen, it gives us stuff to talk about. Yeah, so for point. me, it's not all that tiresome. I, we, listen, when you're a fan of that team and a guy's kind of, you know, stringing you along and you got to figure out what you're doing. And like, yeah, that can become very frustrating. And I think that we've seen that, you know, last year with Tom Brady. But, uh, yeah, I'm very glad we're not going to see him go to another football team and uh, just kind of, you know, peter out in ways that we've seen other guys. And it becomes sad sometimes. And I'm glad we don't have to see Tom go through that.